For every buzzword that makes us feel good inside, there are those that trigger negative emotions. Words like toxic, trauma, and the 2022 word of the year according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, gaslighting. When we think about the slow pace of progress of DEI in corporate America, it evokes all of those feelings. But if we can't even call it what it is, how can we expect anything to change? In our book, we challenge readers to be rich enough to speak your truth, because we believe when you have your financial house in order, you're more likely to stand up for yourself and your beliefs. And this is where DEI and our financial lives intersect. Many people are afraid to criticize their employers because they don't want to put their livelihoods at risk. Conversely, if they don't speak up, in some ways they're complicit in their continued mistreatment. It's a complicated game with very real consequences, but we found community to be a powerful force for change. When more of us decide to courageously push in the same direction, at the same time, amazing things happen. Because I'm wondering if you have this experience where you know, you've met with and surveyed hundreds, maybe even thousands of yeah. women of color. Do you find that they are um, hesitant to label their organizations as toxic or as racist? No, actually not. Um, I'll, I mean, I will share with you. Well, and let, let me make sure, like the label itself or talk about their experience. You know, A little bit of both, right? In, in our experience, there has been... Um, great hesitance to mm -hmm. use that word. It's mm -hmm. almost like if I say that word, um, it, there's there's nowhere to go but out, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is no fixing that. Like yeah. it's, it's like a- Sounds like a choice. Yeah, yep. yeah. It's like calling someone racist, right? Yep. It's like you can't take yep. that back and they yep. will more often than not deny it. And, and so it's one of those things um, uh, that, that has come up quite yeah. a bit, even though, again, whenever we would bring it up in conversation, yeah. we're really reflecting data and reports that we've yeah. seen and surveys, like what you've done. So yeah. I'm just curious as to whether or not- I, I don't, I'm so I'm fast, like I wanna ask you questions, like I'm fascinated by that. No, I've not found that. So I, I, so part of what I do, right, I, I'm a co-founder of a company called Information where we hold safe space for women of color and, and people talk about their work experiences mostly, right? So, so private, we don't talk about it publicly. So I would, I would tell, yes, a lot of people talk about their experience openly. So maybe not in general public, but in closed doors. I think, especially amongst other women of color, there's more sharing than I've ever seen before. I do particularly writing on toxic rock stars and toxic cultures. And I can't tell you how many people respond to that language. I will say though, you're right in that they won't respond in D, you know, like in, in the messages in LinkedIn, they'll DM me separately and tell me this is my experience. So maybe yeah. that's what you mean. Um, yeah. But I would, I just held space and I'm trying to figure out what I do with this work uh, with two professors earlier, sorry, last week. And we just called five women who had responded to me with toxic, like real toxic rock star experiences. So someone who's a high producer, but really bad behavior uh, might not be a boss, but a colleague. And I am not sure what to do with what they shared with me. These were not women I knew, I literally had never met. And they showed up and they shared stories of everything from what you would expect, like um, someone trying to uh, demean their reputation all the way to um, physical abuse, like literal wow. sexual harassment and, and date rape, like the entire gamut. These were not women I knew. And so it was profound because of the fact that I think people are wanting to share their stories. Maybe it's really more about the space that we create, but um, yeah, I'm not finding that. I just feel like people... Women are wanting to tell their stories, right? I, I struggle with like how to help and what to do next. But yeah, I, I, I've not found that. I think people are willing to tell their stories, maybe label the company toxic. I've not asked that question. So I could see maybe that's the disconnect, but I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not um, wanting for stories or wanting for people saying they've had toxic situations or are working in a toxic environment. I think that speaks to um, quite honestly the fulfillment of what you've built. I mean, you you mentioned you've started an organization in for information, yeah, um, and it is designed to be a safe space for women of color to yep. do exactly that. Um, yep. And to be fair, and, and even a critique to us, we haven't necessarily done that, and so that might actually be a, a contributing factor as to why. Uh, people are a bit hesitant. Mm -hmm. I also think that because so much of the conversations that we've been having have also been rooted in uh, kind of the financial implications, yeah. I think yeah. 
there's there's the very real yeah. you know understanding of the consequence if yeah. i ruin my reputation or if i call yeah. this person out or this manager out it, it can have very real financial yeah. comp, um, implications for me and so yeah. i think that's probably why i think that's fair contributed to it yeah i also yeah. think like so much of my book is telling stories i mean yours is as well but it's it's um people women sharing their stories anonymously of like what their experiences are like mm. and so many i mean i I'm sure you do too. I, I get messages weekly of women saying like, I see myself in this story or this was profound. I think because there's not enough of those stories shared. So I think they're, I mean, I will also share women tell me they're triggered by reading the book and they can only read two chapters and they have to put it down, right? Which I, I never expected. I was triggered for sure. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, and I didn't expect because I'm like, this is just, right? Stories or this is yeah. just. And so um, I think maybe that's the nature of how it was presented. I think maybe just um, it's calling for that. And I also say that my work in the world is making women realize being seen and heard, which I think is a lot of what we all do, but it's also that their experiences are not unique to them. Like not in a bad way, but that there is a universal experience for many of us that is not being talked about in a systemic issue. So it could be the framing. I agree. Um, I also literally use the word toxic, right? Rockstar, toxic, this, toxic. So I think people are just comfortable using that language back to me. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll watch for it now. Like now I'm curious. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of Cashing Out the Podcast. To see more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to turn on your notifications. To get your copy of Cashing Out the Book, visit Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, or download the audiobook on Audible.